Hello, everyone. Welcome uh, once again. It is time to continue being a lawyer. Yes. Who needs a law degree when you have this game? This has taught me everything about the law. I'm passing that bar for sure. Anyway, we're playing more Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. Uh, the first one. The fourth one. You know what I mean. On the last case, uh, last time, we we went back in the past, we played as uh, good old Phoenix Wright, um, him doing a case uh, that pretty much got rid of his career and ended his career. And now we're in the aftermath of that and also are going to be flash forwarding back to the present day. We're kind of in between two points of view, which is pretty raw. Not gonna lie. Um, I'm very excited to see how that goes. So uh, let's uh, let's get this going. We are now in the Mason system, a mystery across time. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? I don't know. Anyway, we did collect a decent amount of evidence already. Uh, with this one, we found out about the trick that Trucy can do, which helped her distract Mr. Meekins here to help her dad perform the disappearing act. Because who knows what's going on there. We're trapped in a bunch of Cyclops with Vera as a child there. And in the detention center, we have a bunch of Cyclops with uh, the uh, good old guy over there but i want to jump to the present to see maybe if any of the evidence here will help us out because doing that has unlocked us the borscht bowl club uh i haven't been here in a while actually I haven't been here ever i do wonder i assume maybe this is after our client vera who is at this point in time 19 years old uh got poisoned can't connect to my network Yes, you can. Shut up. I don't know what that is or what is doing that all the time. It always does that, but then it is. And then we're not really needing the internet right now, so, you know. It is on a wireless connection, so maybe that's what it is. I don't know. The Boys to Bolt Club. Oh, what the fuck are you doing here? I'll be taking my leave now. Still have some work to... Still have some work to do back at the office. And I guess I'll go back to my piano. To be honest, it's better when you aren't playing. Oh, uh, so this is present day, but still at Phoenix's perspective. <laughs> huh. As in, before he was uh, accused of a murder. Wow, alright. Interesting. This frigid culinary dungeon almost feels comfortable. Later then. Bye, sir. <sighs> Two hours left on my shift. I wonder if we'll get any customers tonight. <coughs> Do you know who I am? Oh my god. What the... Ah... Uh my brain is breaking okay so now looking at this man much more closely i did not at all connect two and two together but literally as he looks at me it's like okay no i see it now oh you've got to be fucking kidding me you've got to be fucking kidding me he's dead oh no oh juicy no juicy no Oh, you... Oh, my God. Oh. He's fucking dead. Unless he pretended to die. But I doubt that. What? Oh, he probably... Oh, Christoph got up. Walked away. Looked at this dude. And was like... Oh, fuck. He's alive. What? He, what is he doing here? I gotta kill him. I have to kill him now. <laughs> like... Oh 
who I am. <laughs> Let's just keep going. Fuck. But this is now explained. I was like, how does this case? How does this, the case one, fit any of this? This explains everything! This, is con this one scene has connected every fucking thing in this entire game! This is fucking peak. This goes hard for a DS game. This was on the DS! My next of Super Mario Brothers on the DS! I could've been playing this on a DS Lite when I was a child, but no. Anyway. <clears throat> Unless I, except I, I'm, my dumbass bought over the hedge for the DS. I was like, yeah, this is great. I think I still have that somewhere. Those old DS games? I'm not sure. <sighs> Who I am? No. But if you hum it, I can play it. Just kidding, I don't do requests. How about a different sort of request? You see, I play cards. Oh, a customer. I was just hoping someone would come in and save me f from a night at the Keys. I seek a true competition. True competition. I've heard the Borscht Bowl Club is the place for this. No, I see the rumor is true. And this is a friend of yours. What is... Why are you here? What? Why are you here? Ah, don't mind me. I'm just your friendly neighborhood newsman. Sure. Uh, he will not be playing tonight. When his business is finished, I shall send him home. This competition will be between us, no others. The right talent agency presents two artists. And I'm number two. I play piano. Well, sort of. It's actually just a front for my real talent, which is playing poker. Don't ask me how I got started. I don't remember. But I'm good. Real good. This song is also really good. Like it's intriguing and then it does this. Da, 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 da. I'm not sure if it goes into a soft tone. I'm not, I'm not a music expert, but it, I, I like its, its shift. It goes dun and then da da da. Anyway, enough music theory. It didn't take long for the rumors to get around. Go to the Borscht Bowl Club if you want a real game. That guy's never lost. People don't come to hear me tickle the ivory. They come to watch me play cards. Is this a CD poker club? No. It's a restaurant. We don't play for high stakes. There's no money involved. But real players carry cash. And they're always thirsty. It's a handy source of income for the club owner. Then let's compete. I'll take you to the room. The hat out! Yes. But before we go... Yes? Allow me to introduce myself. <laughs> My name is Shady Smith. Fuck. I totally forgot this man's fucking name. Had I remembered it, I would have remembered... Oh, it's Shady Enigma. Shit. Wow. Um... Maybe it's just uh, the fact that I've been playing this game over the course of a month. And I play other games. But, uh... Yeah, I should have remembered that. I just thought this guy would be... Oh, he's just a regular murder. Like, the focus was on Phoenix and Kristoff. Like, those two were the big focus. Also, Apollo was there, and also, uh... Uh... Mr. Payne... <laughs> was there, too. But, really didn't even think about the actual victim too much. Except the weird circumstances of why he had a... Uh... The Chusey Locket. Oh, and I'm Brushel! Spark Brushel! Here's a bar! Oh, I'm... No, no. Phoenix Wright. Huh? You must always look a man in the eye when you make your introductions. You still do not know who I am. Have we met? Oh! Today in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. What are you talking about? I'm talking 
about this? Mr. Enigmar! The defendants escaped! Find him, quick! Bailiff! Close all the exits! What the fuck? On the double! He must not be allowed to escape! None of this magic shit! You, you... You can't be! But you're... Zack Grammary? <laughs> yes, the reincarnation act of the century. I pity I have only an audience of one. And this guy, you. Don't forget him. I, hang on, I need to remember his name. Don't forget Spark Brushel. How old is he? Hang on, how do you check? H36. Interesting. Okay. I was about to say what up with his age, but um, I think he's 22. Greenhorn defense attorney. I happen to meet. I call him Apollo. Incarcerated in the central penitentiary for murder of Shady Smith. Uh, but uh, yeah, Valent Grammary. I want to say the youth have not been kind to. He was in his thirties. He was in his thirties. That dude looked like he was in his early twenties. And then in seven years, he fucking looked like he grew to 50. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Zach Cramley, this must be a bad dream. In a sense, this guy ruined my life. You there. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, it's our old guy. What a girl. <laughs> we will play soon. Ready the room. Da. I will be preparing the hideout for you. Fucking dumbass. God, I don't have to keep working this job. Are you really him? The Zach Grammary? No, I'm Shady Smith. Remember this. How many years has it been now? Six? In exactly three days from now, it will be seven. I caused you much inconvenience, I fear. Yeah, you could say that. Is she well? Juicy, I mean. She's fine. I've got her working already. I hope you don't mind. I need hardly express my gratitude. But you have it. This is why I've come. That and to settle a matter of cards. By which you mean poker. Those eyes, he's serious. I despise losing above all else. And so I've decided that I will win tonight. No matter what it takes. I know this guy's type. And they're dangerous. Everything's about the competition. All else is secondary. Perhaps we should take this time to talk before we play. I know you have much to ask me. And I, you! Let's examine this room. We won't see it ever again. This is piano. I must say it comes as quite a surprise. I never knew you played. I'd do anything else if I could, believe me. Oh yeah, there's something you could help me with. Do you think you could make that piano disappear? It'd help out in a lot of ways, really. <laughs> you so just dropped. <laughs> you said the funniest things with the straightest face. People always tell me that. Except I wasn't joking. <laughs> it's just depressed going into Phoenix, it's fucking... <laughs> How old is Phoenix now in this, at this time? In, like 30 plus, right? 30 plus bodies. Like, I'm depressed now, man. 30's hit me. I'm playing a, a gig I don't really care about. I miss the law. I miss her. I miss Edgeworth. This is grape juice. Is it refreshing? Uh, I usually drink too much, and it ends up making me thirsty. Oh, Mr. Wright. There's something inside that bottle. Huh? It's my business card. You aren't surprised at all. Perhaps you don't like magic. I sure felt surprised. Maybe I had my poker face on. <laughs> he has a poker face, he does. Also, that's how his business card... Oh, did he put... No, no. He put the card in there. And then after he showed him the trick. Why is he so angry after... He really hates losing. 
Dude, don't you want to talk about your daughter? He only mentions it once, well, he mentions it once, but... One of the restaurant tables. This one's the closest to the piano. Which makes it the hardest to eat at, I hear. On days when I'm playing, that is. What do you think about the ukulele? What the fuck are you talking about? What the ukulele? The sound is slight. The annoyance. Curtail. A ukulele in a Russian restaurant? Then you must go to a Hawaiian restaurant. Hawaiian shirts don't go with my complexion. <laughs> I give up. The small talk is awful. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I don't have my badge to present you. Hey, can I present you this? Mr. Zach, could you tell me what this is? Mr. Wright, we meet for the first time in seven years and you offer me this. Please. It wasn't a present? This guy's a hard sell. Probably won't get a rise out of him unless I show him something real interesting. I still have this. Hey, what about this? No. What about this? This person in the photo is Trucy's mother? <clears throat> How'd you come by this? Trucy showed it to me. She said her mother was gone. Then... It is so. Huh? She is gone. What more is there to say? Um... Lots? Like, come on, man. Oh, I know, I know! Well, you're still here? According to my in-depth research, Juicy's mother, Maggie V. Grammarie's only daughter, end quote. What? what Boy, wait, 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 that's... I, I am... I didn't read it that correctly. So... She... Trucy is Magnify's granddaughter? Huh. Well, that's... Damn, this girl... <laughs> Like Maya, this girl's gone through the shit. What is it with this writer being like, yes, let's have the sidekick character have the most depressing life where all of her family members have perished for some reason or another. Like, good lord. What? Magnify's daughter? Is that true, Mr. Zack? Russell, you say too much. What am I about? Why? Zach Dectum. Zach Dectum? Oh my god. He drew a deck of cards at him. Damn. In any case, Mr. Wright, this discussion is over. The lots of grammary. She's the most mysterious of the whole lot. I need to gather me some ev more evidence. Clearly. Is that this? But no, we find out that that's it, huh? God. What about your first letter? No, okay. that's fine. Let's just talk to him. The meaning of competition. We competed that day seven years ago, too. Ah, yes. You must have been surprised. Call the detention center out of the blue. Two. Wait, that was at the detention center? I <laughs> didn't even realize. Showdown time. Isn't there like a glass usually between us? I, I lost. It's only a game of poker. A game I played for a long time and only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. You choose your defense attorneys by playing poker. Some are hired, others are fi others fired. When you compete, you see a man's true nature. You know what I speak of. I know that you do. Trucy's power. Juicy. She's in a class of her own. For seven years, I've played poker here at the Borscht Bowl Club. And I never lost once. I'm good. 
but not that good. Chushi is a master poker player. That's the power that we've been using. I win because whenever there's a big game, I bring in Trucy. Uh, she sends me signals. Daddy, he's got a good hand. You might have a chance if you act quick. Better call him soon. Can you tell me what her power is? Judging a person's thoughts by reading their reactions. A staple of performance magic. Oh, just like Apollo. But those of Chusi's line possess far greater skill. Her line? Recall you were the second man to whom I've lost. Magnify Grammar. That was the first time I learned of this power, as you call it. Wait, so you're saying her power is genetic? Oh, superpower. She's like an X-Men. It's just in the Grammary blood or something? Blood. Oh, that makes sense. The Trucy's mom, who is, uh, you know, you know. Lamar. I was, I was trying to remember her name. But uh, Trucy's mom, she, she has, even though she's blind, she can tell, like, things through her sight. Like, it's almost like a sixth sense. Like, she can tell, like, where everything is. That's her power. She's using it. Oh, wow. Well. I'm sorry, but it is not something told lightly to outsiders. And there's nothing you need to know at this time. It's some kind of grammar secret, then? Fine. Bye, Trucy. She's 15 this year? She's still trying her best to follow in your footsteps, you know. I... I see. When I planned my disappearing act, it was the thought of her alone that gave me pause. Wait, you were planning on vanishing from the get-go? I mean, he did say that. Uh, yes, and for that I must apologize. However, I could not be found guilty that day because of this. The fake evidence. This? A transferal of rights. You see this? Oh wait, no, that's something else. I hereby give all rights to secrets staging. Transferal of rights. You see the signature? A transferal. That's Magnifique Grammarie's signature, isn't it? I hereby give all rights to the secrets staging and performance of my magic. To the recipient named below. Recipient Zach Grammary from Rack Magnify Grammary. And the recipient's name is you, Zach Grammary. Yes, it is I. Uh... Wait, this page looks torn. You recalled the diary, yes? Oh, that's where it came from. First, take a close look at this diary. Note that the page has clearly been ripped out. As it just happens, I have here what I believe to be a missing page. Wait, let me see that! And it was a fake missing page. How could I forget? That scrap of paper lost me my attorney's patch. This is the real page that was torn from the book. Magnify gave it to me that night. You could have told me this earlier. Like seven years earlier. Once again, I must apologize. It was all I could do to prepare for my escape from that courtroom. Transferal of rights, huh? The greatest of Magnify Grammarie's illusions are true art. As such, they are all they were well protected by this document. Only its bearer may perform his illusions on stage. Sounds like a pretty important thing to have if you're his disciple. As the rightful heir to his art, I, too, wanted to a rightful heir. Rightful? I'm sure you know who I chose as my successor. I, I mean, I'm honored, but I can't accept- No, my daughter, you dumbass! Oh. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, your daughter. That is why I've risked all to come here tonight. Brushel! 
You will be my successor. Ah. Uh, now. Ah, oh, damn it. Fine, okay, so it's be Trucy. Sir, here you go. What's this? A letter passing the rights I have inherited to Trucy. Oh. 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 I would have you sign here as a witness. Oh, that's his signature. But what? I'm not a lawyer anymore. And you need a public notary beside. Oh, there, that's why he's here. Ah, I may not look it, but I'm a certified notary. You are? By day, I wear a notary's glasses and hunt for news. Also, by day, I wear a reporter's glasses and notarize. Got those mixed up, but okay. When I take off the glasses, I can't see very well. Your signature, please. This is the first reason I've come here tonight. The transferal of rights. Document transferring the right to perform the Grammarie repertoire to daughter Juicy. Ah. I finally figured it out. Now I know why you've come out of hiding only now. It's been seven years, you said. Precisely. Sorry, the old Phoenix Wright music. <clears throat> There's a law that covers your situation. After seven years, missing persons are considered to be legally deceased. So if someone was to vanish from the face of the earth seven years ago, they would lose all rights as a living person after seven years from that day. Not to mention all of their possessions. Exactly. Which is why I'm here. Risk showing my face in public for the sake of this document. Well, my seven years are up. You might say, I'm securing my daughter's inheritance. But do you really need this document? Wouldn't you see inherit your estate automatically? Not in this case, I am afraid. This case? Yes, I received the performance rights from Magnifi Grammary. However, this was done in secret without witnesses. Before Magnavi died, two potential successors to his repertoire were named. Myself, Zach Grammary, and Valent Grammary. He's a real murderer. Oh no, that dude is totally a murderer. <laughs> that's, that's, that's just depressing. Not Trucy. That dude was kind of fun and cool, and now he's kind of a murderer. <laughs> I see. So you do need this document. I've known Brushel since before I vanished. He's a man I trust. I'm surprised about that. No, that connection, but understandable, yes. Now only three know of my Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming out on the PlayStation 5 in like a day. I took the liberty of pre-ordering it. It's not, in my, it's not here yet. Also, I took the liberty of looking into Trucy's background. I found you had no other close kin. It is as you say. Okay, you don't have kin. I was hoping he'd say something more about the mother at this point. He really is not talking about his, his, wife, his wife there. Okay. I know everyone else, but Trucy's mother is a mystery. Well, the prelude may have been longer than the main attraction. Shall we begin our game? My final competition? Final? Why? As you said, I've come out of hiding today to make this document legally blinding. Binding. Blinding. Um, Freudian slip on a, on a very specific guy. If you're considering Juicy's mom. All right. Well, once that is done, I shall slip once more underground. Not seeing your daughter? It would be best if I did not. Seven years ago, we played. Seven years ago, I lost. I already lost to Magnify. I do not care to lose to another. And I have heard that you never lose. It's just a rumor. Yes, for it is impossible to never lose, unless one has an ace up one's sleeve. As a magician, it causes me no end of irritation. To think a mere lawyer might be out there pulling the wool over so many eyes? Hey, I just signed your document for you. Maybe you could try lightening up? That was that. This is this. 
For my final competition, I will destroy your perfect record, Phoenix Wright. This will be my final performance. You are warned. This guy's beyond serious. So much for a fun evening of cards. Russell, you may leave. Ah, but it's your last game. I mean, what a scope. I punch and I punch, but still it is not enough. Uh, I just remembered uh, future air uh, prior engagement. Doodles, gentlemen. Oh, and nice meeting you, piano man. Bye. I've been known as a piano man now. Then let us begin. Dealer! Ah, don't pay me enough for this. God. You will be witness to our competition. Da, da. It is an honor for me. Why haven't I seen her around here before? Ah, that reminds me. I saw familiar faces as I entered this restaurant. He did not seem to notice me, however. Gavin, I believe was his name. You know him? After a fashion. Listen, Phoenix Wright. One can learn much from a true competition. Remember this. You should have told me about this. The grammary power. I was close to understanding it. But I needed more. I knew where to get it. Trucy's mother. I need to meet that reporter again. That was clear. And one other thing. From the moment my final competition with Zack began that night, a name was running through my head. The name of a man, now in prison. A name Zack Grammary knew. But how? And why? <sighs> Boy. Well, this that was a revelatory meeting. Solitary Cell 13. <laughs> he has a library. A fucking fancy chair. What is this? This is preferential treatment. Got a violin there? Present day. Central prison. Solitary cell. 13. Did you committed murder? Well, well. Isn't this an unexpected surprise? What errand brings you down to my cramped confines? Gavin. Is this your idea of revenge? Phoenix Wright. Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago. My past is like my logic. Straight and true. Nothing's changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little tet tet, -tet right? You look well, Phoenix, right? You too, Gavin. I mean, just look around these, these fancy abode. Look at that. It's strange, you know. I'm here. I, here I am in solitary, and yet the books keep piling up. Looks like you've got more than books up here, up there. Ah, yes, my collection. A few friends on the prison staff. They show me a little, a little kindness. How oh, nice. Just a little. I'm so happy for you. That envelope's been bothering me since I came in here. It's not nice to pick at other people's mail. Oh my god, it's the envelope. It's the yellow fucking envelope. You get mail in here? That I do. Though they read at it first, apparently. Still, I am allowed the pleasure of correspondence. Packages and the like are a different matter, however. Hmm. Looks like sneaking a peek is out of the question. Nice chair. Where's your bed? That's some chair. Just looking at it, at it makes me want to take a seat. That's true. You'd probably have to add a whole digit to the price of one of those in my, of my office chairs. In here, a comfortable chair is the most valuable thing in the world. You'd have to add two digits to the price of the standard prison issue chair for this. Those prison chairs don't look so bad either. Maybe I should redecorate. I 
she was gonna say, maybe I should go to prison. <laughs> like, what? Maybe I should just commit a murder. Just kill him right here. Hello, Verde. It's Kristoff. Yes. It is It is him. The older own brother. The Oni Chan. Who is possibly evil. But very much evil. You taking care of this one here? Ah, yes. She's surprisingly delicate, you know. This guy reminds me of Edgeworth, but like, evil. Requires careful tending. But she is my best friend, as they say. Best? Come on now, I'm starting to feel bad for you. Oh? Of course, she's known to bite if handled roughly. The rose bites? I was speaking of the photo next to the rose. My retriever, Von Gole. Cute, but feisty. Every dog has its thorn. I want to see the dog. Can I see it? Oh. That's a retriever, apparently, though. He has a window. That's nice. God damn. All right. Um. No, what do you about this? What do you think about this, Gavin? I hardly need to remind you that I am not a free man. I care little about the outside world save advances in chair technology. No information forthcoming there, I guess. It's gotta be something interesting, like this. What do you think about this, Gavin? Nah, his poker face is too strong. What do you think about this, Gavin? I don't know what the fuck that is. Is it a letter? Yeah, right, you wouldn't know what's inside the letter. What do you think about this, Gavin? Ba bam Fucking chew him, and I leave. I don't miss that. That wasn't me. I think a squirrel came in and shot him. Gavin's murder. And if it's been full of surprises for both of us. I have no doubt you've never expected to lose that attorney's badge of yours. And I bet you never expected to wind up here. Shady Smith was the name of the man you killed. Did you know who he really was? Who he was? Zach Grammary, you know, the D defendant. I remember him, of course. But you say Smith was Zack? Impossible. He's looking down on me now, damn. I like that its sprite is like this, like, sneering sprite. That's pretty cool. Hello. Hello, second. Don't even try to tell me it was a coincidence. What did I just say? Life is full of surprises. Don't you think? After that trial, you were arrested and found guilty, but your motive was never made clear. A mistake I plan to remedy. You're not an attorney anymore, Phoenix, right? What possible conclusion do you think this investigation of yours can lead to? I killed a man named Smith with a bottle because I am an evil human being. Isn't that enough? Not for me, it isn't. I need to know why you did it, Gavin. Damn, he's obsessed with this. It's like his Hannibal Lecter. You recall that case seven years ago? Ah, uh, yes, the trial where Zack Grammary pulled his famous vanishing act. My brother won his fair share of praise and adoration for that trial, as I recall. Genius prosecutor reveals crooked attorney, was it? That was when I met you, wasn't it? Was it now? The Bar Association Review Board voted unanimously unanimously for the strictest punishment. Unanimous save for one dissenting opinion. Yours. It was my brother who was responsible for putting you in that position, after all. For seven years we've been friends. And yet I still don't understand you. But right, your friendship toward me was never pure. You suspected me then, as you still do now, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I would have done that too. I would have been like, this guy's brother got me in 
trouble for a piece of fake evidence I supposedly found. Huh. He probably was involved with this somehow, wasn't he? Honestly, right now, I'm not sure what to think. Reason for murder. You didn't just brain a guy with a juice bottle for... Ju juice bottle for no reason. Tell me why you did it. Persistent, aren't you? I came here because I remembered something. The night of our game. Zach Gramry mentioned your name, Gavin. Well, that reminds me. I saw a familiar face as I entered the restaurant. He did not seem to notice me, however. Gavin, I believe his name. After that, he was killed, and I asked you to help me. Because I remembered your kindness back when everyone had turned on me. And I seem to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him. Hard. Me? Please. The cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should have come to that. Crazy. I have to know. Why did you kill Shady Smith? No. Zach Grammary. How many of these you got, buddy? Of course you have five. Oh. I've never seen Cyclops like these. Damn, these are some impressively rich Cyclops. Look at that. Dark. Cold. Full of despair. Can I even unlock these things? Something wrong, right? No, it's nothing. You shouldn't push yourself so hard. Life is to be taken easy, you know. Oh, God damn it. God damn it. He's doing his nails? He's putting... That could just be nail polish. Or that could literally be poison. He's literally putting poison on his fucking nails. He's like, yeah, I got poison on my nails. <laughs> Can I examine this? You're thinking, what self-respecting man would use nail polish? Not really. I know appearances are a big thing with you. You know what I say. One cannot live a beautiful life without beautiful nails. First rate in all things. Except nothing less. That certainly does look like first rate nail polish. I like the sparkly bottle. It is a very nice bottle. To the point where I, for the longest time, did not know what the fuck it was every time she... Vera would show it. I was like, what is she do? What is that thing? I was like, oh, it's a nail polish bottle. It's crystal. You're so drawn to it. Please have one. It's on me. Jesus. <laughs> he just gave me this bottle of poison. Possibly. Found in Christophe Gavin's cell. The nail polish is colorless. Mm. <laughs> colorless nail polish. Yeah, no, this is poison. Bro, what the fuck, bro? Hmm. Ariadone. I've heard of that brand. This must be a brand symbol. It's supposed to be some kind of flower. Wait, no, maybe it's a hand. Wait, on second thought. Is that an eagle? I thought it looked like bananas. Is this like a, a game right now? We're just like guessing what it's supposed to look like to us, like a Rorschach plot? It's called a clear coat, puppy. Jeez. <laughs> no, it's clearly a coat of poison. He wants me to give it to Trucy and be like, here's a present, and then she's fucking dead the next morning. Who makes these things up, by the way? Anyway. You'd think they try for a clearer symbol, at least. Maybe it's just the DS graphics. Well, this has been a fun conversation. I have no idea what to talk to you about, sir. Here I am in solitary, and yes, my books keep piling up. Yes. Master is... Can I present his own nail polish? I just gave you that. Why are you presenting it to me? What are you, a fucking idiot? Do you know what this is? Liar, you know what this is? Oh, this is fun. All right. We should end the inquiry. Yeah, now we're stuck. God damn it.
Can we go to Vera and try? Let's give it a shot. We have some more information. Um... So we have three people, no, four people with Cyclops. We have Vera, Kristoff, uh, Shady Smith, and, uh, what's his name, Val, I guess? I think. So many names to remember. Valent. Oh, yeah. Valent Grammary. Look at him. Look at him. He, the age has not done him well. Seven years. He looks like he's in his 20s, and then seven years later, he looks like he's 50 plus. Oh, anyway. Let's give it a shot. There's two of them, so this should be easy. Stamp. Hmm. Is this charm your good luck charm? Ah, the nail polish. This was what they gave you, wasn't it? Ah! Same bottles over there on your desk. Your good luck charm, right? Bam! I heard once cosmetics were once thought to ward off evil. This is a magic bottle. It has the power. Ah, of course it does. I just refrain from commenting anymore on that one. I think I know who gave you that bottle, actually. The one who asked you to do this job. Was this the client? Tease? Did he already guess it? Funny enough, the other Gavin brother isn't even here. Clavier. Don't know why not. I mean, Apollo's here. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Hey, hell, he got rid of his thing. It does not matter. Got rid of his attorney's badge. This man is a friend of mine. Know him? Ah! His name is Christoph Gavin. He's a lawyer, actually. I, I, I promised. I promised not to tell. Yeah, well, I need you to tell. Please, Vera. I really do. Okay, well, we unlocked one thing. The client. I'm sorry. I can't talk about the client. I promised. And if I break my promise, the spell won't work. I don't need a name anymore. I've got my answer. You're pretty confident in this charm, then. I think they might be the devil. Whoa. Huh? Or maybe an angel. What do you mean? I saw it. Or I think I saw it. When they gave me this. I saw the devil's face. Are you saying the client's face looked like the devil's? No. The client was gentle. With a gentle smile. So where'd you see this devil then? It was so quick. I don't remember well. But that's when I... That's when I knew that person wasn't like other people. That's why I believed in my good luck charm. I'm not sure what this devil she saw was. But it's pretty clear that Kristoff Gavin has her charmed. He's talking about Kristoff's brother. Uh, could be... He's been helping us this entire time. Huh? Would he be a devil? Ah, uh, seven years changes a person. Although maybe he is. No. Well, I think that's all. That's all. I'll be leaving now. I am so sorry for what happened. If you want to apologize, try my client, Zach Grammary. Um, did I do something bad? What makes you think that? Your eyes, they're sad. Very sad. Uh, I'll put on a smile next time I come. Promise. I hope to see you smile too, then too, Vera. Vera. Oh, okay. Take care. Thinking back on my first encounter with the young forger, I witnessed something of a vital importance that day. Of course, by the time I realized it, it was already too late.
Although she in this in this sprite she did put her hand to her face. Is it poisoned? Hmm. Don't know. Could try the attention center. It does seem like this is a lot of stuff to go through, but we'll give it a shot. Wait, do we have any new evidence to present? What about this? Hmm, yes, I accept your challenge. Well, no. Thank you, Tuck. I not mention this. No, I think some of this evidence is also out of time, so it's like not applicable to this. Although, I mean, no, this worked. I'm assuming in, in the past, Phoenix just took a photo of the nail polish and was like, huh. Oh, no, 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 it's not a photo. It's like he looked at it that she had one right now. Maybe he noticed that Kristoff has an extra copy. Possible, no. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, fuck it. Why not? Let's give it a shot. This one may have more stuff, though. I may have to want to try good old Shady Smith. Trick up with sleeve. I think I unlocked one of them, though. Guys, wish his life was taken. Troop lived in a world of showmanship. The flashier, the better. And flashy often means danger, doesn't it? Oh, the, the gun. Okay, that was the easy one, obviously. Mm-hmm. Not murderers. An accident. Because someone already had been hurt. My Faustian forging friend. But tell me, what can you prove with a single pistol? Well, tell me what would have happened if there had been an accident. What if one of your bullets took a life on stage? Performance magic is not concerned with what ifs. It's concerned with precision. Precision whom do you claim was shot? I can only present evidence, but... Stamp. I need to be specific. The locket! That's right, the locket. But... But that's... Back to Grammarie's wife and Trucy's mother. The Lassa. I believe her name was. Uh, uh, he's saying that. But how can you say this? How can you say she was struck by one of our bullets? Still in denial mode, eh? The lasso was at the greatest risk of being shot, and this clue shows just how much danger she was in. Oh, no, I don't have enough evidence. I think I know why. I need to prove she's probably was or were always blind. That's her risk, but I need proof of that. Unless, let's get this. Does it show that? Is she blind? Hmm. Probably not. But I don't have proof of this. I wish you could save sack locks, but you have to restart them again when you come back here. I may have to go to Shady Smith. I'm close now. He's probably the one who has the information. Maybe there's more stuff I unlocked because of Vera, though. Yeah, we don't have that. That's just a lot. I don't even want to attempt that. <laughs> it could be easy, though. <laughs> could be like old bag. Sure, whatever. That would be very anticlimactic if it was. Um, Back and forth. Back and forth. Okay. I think I know why you don't want to talk about her. The locket? Well, Mr. Zack, 
Uh, let me be frank. It is true I do not wish to talk of her. And now there is another... And now there is another I could care less about. You. Uh, take care you do not end up missing yourself. For some reason it's extra scary when magicians threaten me. I better rethink my strategy here. The Lhasa is officially missing, correct? And I think I know why you don't want to talk about her. <sighs> Could be the document that he just gave me right now. Hmm. No. In fact, it's so much now that I'm just going to reload the save so I don't... All the conversations have been had. I present anything to you. Trissy, about this locket. Oh, that's mommy. Is mommy pretty? Wait, you don't you don't want to know more about mommy, do you, Daddy? I do actually. Eek! I better keep an eye on you, Daddy. Oh, oh that's not all I meant it, honest. She is beautiful though. And something more. Poise, that's it. She's got poise. Dang it! Trissy, please! <laughs> Well, that was... I don't think I read that before, so... Do you see this? I'm sorry. I'm still just training to be a magician. I can't make things disappear yet. But what? Wait, one more year. I'll be able to make it disappear then. I'll uh, be sure to be careful when showing you evidence, evidence to magicians in the future. <laughs> hmm... Or a dead corpse. Hey, yo, Juicy, what about this? We have examined this area. Oh, we haven't examined the room. The mentor's favorite plant. Charlie the plant. I guess what I mean, Charlie, my, Charlie's my only real child now. Wait. I have a child now. I can't feed Juicy like this. Oh, no. She probably needs more than the occasional watering, too, I, I'm guessing. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You can see that hotel from the window here. Every time I look out, I think back on those old cases. I wonder if the view looks different now that I'm not wearing my old badge. I really think how think the far out view, Daddy. Thanks. She must have learned a lot of words from her parents. Far out. Nope. You can. Oh, whoops. No, I meant to click something else. What was this again? An old movie poster hangs on the wall. Oh yeah, those look like real people. I finally found out the title after not knowing for the longest time. I actually rented the movie the other day. I cried my eyes out. Ah, just thinking about it makes me tear up. <laughs> Wait, it's just allergies, really. I should show it to her when she's a little older. Wait, what was it called again? Oh my god. What a memorable movie. My desk. Not that I have a reason to sit there anymore. I guess Tr Trucy can use it. It's great for studying math, English, geography, magic. <laughs> I'm not crying. I just got some dust in my eye. He's so sad. It's going through a lot. Quite the collection of law books my mentor bought, bought all of them. I used to be too busy to read them. Now that I have the time to read them, there's no need. <laughs> But I can't just sell them. Maybe Trucy will want to read them someday. Yeah, she'll quit being a magician and be a lawyer. Nah. Those books are gonna stay there. Mia's like, really? Really, Pink? Couldn't even read them? Come on, man. So I'm the real client. Because she was shot? Oh my god, it was. The three of you were a team once. Not that the entire country doesn't already know this. Oh, and the, the game was like, alright, you know what? You're not guessing it, so we're just gonna give it to you. <laughs> you picked a random piece of evidence. This isn't actually it. At your peak, you were the biggest stars around. But there's another story behind that fame. 
won the nominee now. Oof. Elasa lost her life during the rehearsal. To you and Valent, Grammarie's bullets. It was an accident. It... It wasn't me. How could I shoot my dear Talasa? I'm sure Valent would say the same thing. Why, it's just like another murder I might mention. Damn you! Her eyes. I love Talasa's eyes. I think they could read her. My mind was frightening. Yet there was a warmth in them that felt like an embrace. She's dead. And Magnific Grammarie has joined her. So the only one with her power left now is, is Trucy. Mr. Zack? I do not know. Don't need any power to see through that one, buddy. But there's someone else. Someone other than Trucy. Someone who inherited Talasa's power. <laughs> How would you know? My chances are slim. It would take a miracle to learn the truth. Or maybe one has already occurred. There is someone else with the power, and I know who. Is it? Uh, I guess that is him, yeah. It's our good old boy, Apollo. This. This boy. His name is... I forget. I don't know. Something weird. It's, uh, some fucking weird ass name. Like, come on. Am I right? It's Shady Shims. <laughs> Slim Shady. Phoenix Wright. Apologist. Yeah, weird ass name. Who could he be? An attorney. A attorney? I noticed him when I went to visit a friend's law offices. offices. So, what are we to make of this, oh great ex-attorney? You can show me pictures of strange boys all you like. <laughs> I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> but you could at least say something like, I'm this boy. Like, I could use a laugh. Perhaps you wouldn't laugh if you knew the facts. This might not be 100% proof, but it's close. There's a link between this boy and Talasa. Actually, it's more of a ring. A ring? Perhaps this will refresh your memory. I just so happen to have evidence showing this missing link. Is that on her hair? Is that it? It could fit an arm. Not really. I'm looking for it. I'm so close. The symbols look correct, but I showed gun already, and I don't think it's the same piece of evidence again. <sighs> I mean, it could be that photo. Wait a minute, what about here? There's the pen, there's the book, there's a... Uh, the the piece of it's probably his boy's insulin bag is um the gun there's no ring I see here unless it's over the IV that little thing there no I mean it has to be in is this locket but I can't even open the locket actually wait oh my god it's right there oh there it is right is it shining no, 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 it's like a, a necklace. I don't see any ring. So this is Trucy's mother, Galassa. She's pretty. I can picture her on stage with Zack. Still, she looks like a down-to-earth type too. I guess Trucy takes after her. No. 
what did I show? I showed gun, and then I showed... Uh, Apollo. So, would it be Locket? Because the locket looks the same to, to his little bracelet. Hmm. There's a link between this boy and Dalasso, actually. It's more of a ring. Okay, I have two pieces of evidence here. We have uh, this, which is circumstantial at best, because I'm not really... There's not really anything on her person that would look like... That. I wish I could zoom in even more. Look at that thing right there. On her hair. She's wearing gloves, so I can't really... So I just wanted to lock it. No one... anything else. Maybe the gun? No, I showed the gun already. That's not it. We can always go back. It's gun and then, um... Sorry to forget. Gun and... Apollo. Which is not hard. I'm gonna write it down just in case. Sack is. Wait, balance. It's also a gun. Oh no, I'm getting those two mixed up. You know what? I fucked it up again with the Kappa. Uh. Let's go with. Potato salad! Oh, that didn't unlock a thing. This face is your response, Mr. Ex Attorney. You did say that I wouldn't laugh if I knew the facts, right? Yeah. I literally presented every evidence. <laughs> That's how stuck I was. Goodness. I went to each three of these characters and were like, hey, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And they just, they just probably were very annoyed at me. Like, please stop presenting this evidence. We don't care. Danger. It's a gun. Where she stood. What if it's because she stood in the middle? I swear if it's that, I'm gonna actually kill him. I'm gonna kill him! Oh god, if it's, it's the stamp shows that she stood in the middle, I'm gonna actually kill him. I just came up with that right now. In the hay. <laughs> oh no. I'm taking the cape and I'm killing you. Oh, for fucks! <laughs> she stood in the middle. Why did I get that? Oh. That's it, everybody. It's been a good time. Thank you all for coming out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. <laughs> no, okay. All right. <clears throat> Gonna turn this back off just in case I accidentally fuck something up. All right. Uh, Troop Grammary's performances were very, very popular. So popular they even made a commemorative stamp at the height of your firm. I, if I get stuck on the last slot, I'm going to fucking kill him. Oh, I'm killing myself. We were not merely the latest craze. We were an act, a golden age. It's all here on this stamp. There's Talasa, yes? 
Trucy's mother is missing, I hear. What happened to her? I don't know. Part of his memory is still locked up. There's one thing you're failing to address. What's that? As you say, our troop was a world unto itself. If our leader Magnify was so inclined, he could hide anything he wished with ease. But Mr. Wright, then he would have hid a crime, making him an accomplice. And then would, then he would have hid a crime. Not a great foundation for blackmail. Well, it's got a point. If one of the troop members died in an accident and Magnify covered it up, his innocence would come into question. Found the right address, Mr. Wright? I'm so close, there has to be something. But how Delas' death could affect Zack and Valen's relationship with Magnify. I see in your eyes you still have something to say. How can you possibly prove more than you already have? Prove why Delas' accident tied your hands so completely. It's the first time it asks this question, so it has to be a person. And it could possibly be Trucy, because like... Oh my god, alright, let's, let's read this very carefully now. He could hide anything he wished with ease. Then he would have hid a, a crime, making him an accomplice. Not a great foundation for blackmail. His innocence would come into question. We haven't talked about Trucy. Let's give it a shot. With a person. It's going to take a little knowledge of players to crack this one. The accidental death of Zack's wife tied both your hands. And this information proves why Magnify held so much power over you. <laughs> Damn it again! I don't want to be stuck here forever, man! Were you by any chance trying to threaten me? No, of course not! You'll never make a good blackmail artist! Never! I never would! You're right! Not a career choice I'd be considering, actually. Give up your dreams. Work an honest job. That's my advice. I had an honest job! The troop has a tight-knit unit. It's all about the people involved, their personalities, their histories. Who was Talasa, really? I don't have... What evidence would prove this? I don't know, it had to be... I'm still tied on person. Whereabouts are currently unknown. The, is that a Trucy or Talasa? That's... But that's literally who we're talking about. That doesn't make much sense. Oh my god. It, w it wasn't a question of who shot Talasa. Talasa herself was the problem. Oh, what do you mean? She was Zach Grammary's wife. Trucy's mother. And Magnify Grammary's only daughter. Now that's what we're going with? How is it supposed to infer that from- Okay. I guess that makes some sense. There was a terrible accident, and the two of you killed your mentor's only daughter. If that wasn't the key to Magnify's power over you, I don't know what was. It... It was... It was an accident! The birds, the bunnies, they've come out. Oh my god. Why did I get half elf on that one? Okay. There's no proof. None at all. The lasso went missing. And your mentor, mentor blackmailed both his disciples. Doesn't take a genius to put one and one together. Ours was a complex family. You mean troop grammar? The master, 
Magnific Grammary, his only daughter, and his two disciples. It does sound like a recipe for disaster, doesn't it? Don't be tempted into 40 flights of fancy. Yes, there was an accident. But that is all it was. An accident. Zack and Valance tore the force. The guns blaze, the bullets fly, straight toward the beautiful body on stage. And then crash, sing, pow! Into everything but her. Not that is magic. It happened one day when we were practicing. Same trick, with a new twist. And tragedy. But as for whose bullet stole Delasa's life, we shall never know the answer. Delasa disappeared from our lives and Zack was bereft of his wife. Juicy lost her mother and Magnify his daughter. And now let the blackmail, I take it, is all part of a parcel of the darkness that comes with the curtain falls. What happened to the... What's with this darkness? Why did Magnifique Grammarie try to cover up the accident? It was his own daughter who died. All I can say is... It was a critical time for Troop Grammarie. A passing of the torch from Magnifique to Zack and Valent. We all sacrificed so that it might be a success. Talasa's death was the greatest sacrifice of all. Yet... Even when her life was extinguished, her presence was not. What do you mean? In time we made... We, myself, and Zack found... Found we could no longer oppose Magnifique's wishes. Magnifique forced us to perform his art for his ben benefit. I see. I guess I can understand. I mean, he did lose his only daughter. But do you not find cowardice in his actions? Huh? To decide to hide the truth of your own daughter's death is one thing. But then to hang that death as a guillotine above our heads. Things were dark behind the scenes of Troop Grammary, that's for sure. That's gonna sound like an asshole now. I feel bad. Does Juicy know? She was not told. Naturally. Who would want to know that their father might have taken their mother's life? True. I had not thought of that accident for a very long time. I'm sorry to dredge up old memories, but this had this has helped a lot. Lots of fun, Magnify Slayer, I should think. True. Ah. After that accident, there was one who came sniffing, quite persistently, a reporter. He called himself a newsman at the time. Oh my God, that's how he knew him. Often I spied him lurking about the dressing room doing his research. Would you happen to remember his name? What was his name? Sorry, I have forgotten. But in the course of his interviewing, he became quite close to my partner, Zack. I liked him a lot. I... Oh, wait. I liked him not. Oh, I see. His name... I do not recall. But his recent... The clawing aroma of mint. Yes, whenever he smiled, which was far too often. Those big-ass teeth. Oh, my. I see. Thanks for your help. It does no good to interfere with the past, Mr. Wright. You will not uncover answers. Only wounds. I'm sorry. I began to notice a dark curtain hanging over Troop Grammary. I began to realize what I had to do. I had to protect Chusi from that darkness. The reporter he mentioned. The newsman, I never learned who that was at the time. I've got a pretty good idea who it is now. That smile and that sickly sweet smell of mint. The last flossed in dread connecting Zack Grammary to this world. Sooner or later I'd have to track him down. I've done all the ones in the past. There we go. Oh my god. Well, we can't go here yet. We must go... Oh, we go back? Who's the reporter? Is he in Sunshine Coliseum? Or is she in Sunshine Coliseum? Let's go to Juice Studio.
True studio. <laughs> he is. Huh? Well, 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 what do we have here? Remember me? Of course I remember you! Journalist meets ex-attorney in bar! End quote. Can I ask what you were doing here? Oh, this is literally... Right before the trial. Mr. Misham was poisoned. And his daughter's... Oh, yes, I know. Oh, how I know. Yes. It's caused me no end of grief, to be honest. Journalist wishes he'd track down case just a little quicker. End quote. Were you on the trail of the, this, this case the whole time? Yeah, finally we made progress. I'm glad we weren't stuck in the goddamn locks again. Zach Grimmery was a good friend. Zach said something to that effect back at the Borscht Bowl Club, even though he tried to hit you. What a character. What a man. If a little, no, a lot. No, extremely rough around the edges. You think I could ask you a few questions? Oh, you serious? I mean, I'm usually the interviewer, not the interviewee. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I could take that. Yeah, I guess that, yeah. Journalist asks questions, not other way around. End quote. Hmm. Fine, shoot. I don't care. People have been asking me all sorts of things lately. Sure, sure, sure. Family of forgers. It was tragic what happened to Drew Misham and his daughter. Forgery is a serious crime, and they paid the price. You know what really did them in, though? Don't you? Yes. A forged diary page. The night I interviewed him, I found out something about Mr. Misham I hadn't known. What's that? You know, he always felt like I he was being watched. Every day. For seven years. Walls have ears. Potatoes have eyes. End quote. Being watched. You mean he felt guilty? No, no, no. I'm not talking about feelings here. Like literally someone was tracking him down. Which was probably Kristoff. You know. <laughs> the nose is going into overtime there. Oh, goodness. Oh, no, man. Calm down. You know, I felt watched too. The whole time I've been on this case, no less. Journalist gets tingling sensation on back of neck. Freaks out. End quote. Because you felt guilty? Why would I feel guilty? You felt like you were being watched, huh? I wonder what it all means. Paranoia. I <laughs> changed the paranoia. Drew Misham felt like he was being watched? And you along with him. You sure it wasn't just your nerves? Nerves? No, it's nothing so my name. Like, did you watch like a creepypasta or something? And we're like, oh man, I'm getting that feeling. Is something watching me? I hate it when I do that on the internet. It's like, I watch a creepy video. I was like, hmm, I'm getting creeped out now. I stopped paying attention to my nerves a long time ago. But I felt it too. Journalist, sure, he is being watched. End quote. Do you wonder why Zach Grammary got rubbed out after seven years? Please don't phrase it that way. Right after coming into contact with me? He completely vanishes from that courtroom. Then, for seven years, he talks to no one. Not a soul. Then, just as the remaining time was almost up, he contacts me in order to have this made. And then, he dies. Starting to put the pieces together, are we? And you were being watched this whole time. Oh, uh, yeah. Christoph probably knew about the connection, so he watched him specifically. Maybe not just me. Maybe you were too. M me. Obviously, Christoph was, you know, next to Phoenix all that time. Zach Grammary. I'm in Zach drew that case, actually. You mean the shooting of Magnify Grammary? No, before that. It's not widely known. You mean the accident during the quick draw shooting practice? My, 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 you're well informed. You should have seen me back then. I dug up quite the scoop. I want it all money, fame, women, a little puppy. All for me. Damn. 
I feel you, buddy. I was younger then, and my days and nights smelled of fresher mint than they do now. Alan Grammery did mention one particularly nosy reporter. In fact, I was on close speaking terms with Magnify Grammery at the time. Knew his daughter too, of course. The lassa was it? Really? Then, the lassa disappeared, quite suddenly at that. And Magnify wouldn't say a word about it. Yeah, my evil habit got the better of me. Journalist catches scent of a scoop, goes on feeling frenzy. End quote. I set up a one-on-one -on -one interview with Alasa's husband, see? Zack Grammar. Something strange was in the air over at the Troop Grammar in those days. The whole screwy mentor controlling disciples scene started up by then. Started by then, I'm guessing. Alasa, she was part of it all, right? Come on, you can tell me. Off the record. Sorry. I don't know. Anyway, I kept crying and eventually became friends with Zack. Sure, he punched me out. Punched me once or twice. Or five times. But over time, he came to see me as his confidant. Right. What an interesting friendship. He's been waiting this whole time. Seven years, eh? Waiting. For his big comeback, of course. A big revival of the Magnify Miracle. Of course, it was all a dream. Because of this. Because of this. The performance rights. In the absence of any official documents, he was golden. Who's to say the old man didn't give his rights to both Zack and Valent? So Valent waited until Zack died. Legally, at least. The time finally comes, and Valance like a kid on Christmas morning. He's getting ready for his show at the Sunshine Coliseum, you know. That document sees the legal light of day. It's gonna put a big damper, a bit of a damper on the big show. He's a sorry one, that Valant Grammary. Lost out to his partner at work and in love, too. Yeah, I kind of guess that's where I was going, right? Love triangle. L love It's the same old story, really. Two disciples and their mentor's only daughter. One has three sides, and all of them pointy. A love triangle. Ugh. That is pretty classic. When you're in a performing troupe, that's your world. Of course, it's a love triangle. Ah, uh, the classics. It's like a, it's like family. One with an entire high school's worth of drama, intrigue, and backstabbing. And in the middle of all this, the Lhasa has Trucy. And then she dies. We need to find out more about this, this the Lhasa. Remember this? Mr. Brussel, could you look, take a look at this? Ah, I hear you loud and clear. Loud and clear. So you want me to write an article? You want me to write an article on that, right? What's the angle? Actually, no, that's okay. I don't need an article. I was just wondering if you had any thoughts on this. I hear you. I hear you. You want me to sniff around for a scoop? Well, you've come to the right nose, my friend. <laughs> it's elderless. Th thanks. Okay, that was less than informative. Huh. Alright, so not this. Anything on to Lassa? Mr. Brushel, do you know this person? Do I know that person? Of course! I was friends with Zack after all. He hit me a few times. Eh, five times actually. But still, I'd never forget his wife. The loss of Grammary. Magnifree Grammary's only daughter. Do you think you could tell me more about her? Well, we back, Ma. Thank you. I need some more information on this lady. 
Even though I know who it is. So, Thalassa married Zack and had true Cece. It was her second marriage, actually. Oh? Huh? Okay. Do you mean she was divorced? I heard this one before. Not quite. Her late husband was a performer, too. Apparently, he died during some gig. Tragic, really. They'd only been married one year. I didn't know. Ah, but she was a beauty. I still carry a portrait photo of her around, you know? <gasps> That's her. Ah, there it is. The full photo. Please give me that evidence. I've known Juicy since she was a little thing, too. She's got the better... She got the better deal, really. She's got you for family, after all. Oh, What do you mean? Just reminis reminiscing, you know? Alasa has another child. Besides Trucy. End quote. Oh my god, you got to be kidding me. So I knew he had the gift, but I just thought they were like maybe distant relatives. I didn't really think that they were close relatives. What are you fucking talking about, bro? What do you mean? Wh what? Trucy said she was an only child. Uh, yes. This one she had with her previous husband. Bro, bro. So Apollo and Trucy are like, oh my God, dude. Is it is half siblings? I think this is a term. Oh my god. Her previous husband? Her first husband who died during a performance. Yep, they had themselves a kid. Another orphan now. That's another one who slipped through the cracks. No idea where they are now. I also had another child. Do you think I could borrow the, that photo? Sure, I can be generous on occasion, you know. Photo of young Talasa, Juicy's mother. I need to use time travel in order to, to show this as evidence. Thanks, man. I won't need his locket anymore. Just better return it to Juicy for I thought you were gonna. I, I don't need this locket anymore. <laughs> Chucks it into the corner. It's like, I don't need that. <laughs> People and events all get tangled together and get bigger and bigger. Don't you think? I was too busy wondering about bigger to listen to what you were saying. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta accept that you won't be able to untangle it all, I think. Maybe so, but still, I have to do what I can. And I have to tell what I find to those who come next. Next, you say? I'm not the one who will close the curtain on this little play. Apparently that's not my role anymore. I'm no longer a protagonist. Until Spirit of Justice, I think. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I see him on the, on the cover of that. I, I, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Don't, 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 don't answer that question. Magnify. No, Magnify. I was just wondering what Magnify would think of all this. What do you mean? Haven't you seen the Trucy? She's got his power. Oh, so you know about that too. This character turned out to be one of the most important characters in the, in the entire fucking game. You mean how I can't lie to Trucy? It was the same with Magnify. And with his daughter, Alasa. It's a strange thing. You think it's some grammar gene? Magnify told me once back when Zack married the Lassa. He said Zack had good eyes. Not good like Grammarie's eyes. Not that good. Hmm. I wonder if Zack ever played a game of poker with his wife. Who knows what the Grammarie secret was. Maybe nobody. And that Zack's gone. Zack like Grammary. That's it. The plot had finally begun to reveal itself. It sprouted from a warp in the Grammary fabric and grew, swallowing everything. 
wrapping itself around the Grammary's power. Damn. A power which passed from Magnifi Grammary to Delasa to the next generation. I would once again need to meet the one who bridged it all together. Well, they say he says that, but oh, well, maybe we should we can go here now. We have the photo. Actually, yeah, that was only like I think it was how many cyclops was it? Two? Yeah, I think we already had it. Yeah, fuck that. Let's go do that. Some curse. I'm pretty sure we we have the stuff. We have the sauce. <laughs> no, it was three. Damn it. All right. Well, I don't know if I have the other one. Oh, it's not skipping. Hang on. I should have probably gone to the other area, but we'll see. We already have the the lock to the other one. And he wields a gun. Boom. Damn you. No, oh, I was thinking like how the third case is like, oh, the third case is not connected to the story. It's like, it's, a, it's just a small one-off case. <laughs> and then it turns out to be so fucking connected that this story is so funny. Uh... Actually, I know something. Your marriage to Delasa was her second. D How did you know this? Her first husband. He died a year after they were wed, yes. He was a performer. They met when he joined us Grammaries as a guest at our show. After Delasa wed him, she left the troupe for a while. And you say she had a child then? I have a photograph of her here. I couldn't help but notice she was wearing what she was wearing when I first saw this. Those bracelets stand out. They are a Grammary family heirloom. This boy wears a bracelet just like the ones in the picture. What? So that's why. Why what, Mr. Zack? I took this photograph of Delasa before she left us. When she returned, she wore only one bracelet. I bet I know where that other one went. She gave it to his, this boy. Her son. Why did she leave her son, though? Why did she leave Apollo? Apollo also never talks about this. Oh, I just broke both of them. Okay, good. Thank you. I don't want to deal with this. The grammar is secret. Wow. It's fucking wild. This strange power, I myself do not know from where it comes. But the fact is that it is passed down the Grammary line. It runs in their veins. What is it? I asked her, Delasa, once. This is what she told me. The power responds to tension in others. Tension? If she were to face a person and they become tense, even slightly, and she would know, no matter how hard they tried to hide it from her. So she could see it. Not quite. This is the strangest part of it all. She wouldn't realize that she was subconsciously detecting this tension. Without the use of a particular object, or in her case, objects. Objects. Wait. Wait, is something she wore? Yes. Her bracelets. I admit. The first time I saw one of those, I felt there was more to it than just fashion. What kind of power could a bracelet have? I've made my decision. I'll tell you all I know. Consider it a gift. Oh, wow. Juicy and Apollo, huh? Half siblings. Well, I hardly need you to tell me at this point, but those two. 
My brother and sister. Yes. And the brother too has this power of theirs. Oh my god! That's so nice. It's so adorable. So Juicy has an older brother. I wonder what will come of that. Mr. Wright, tonight after our game is done, I will return to a life of hiding. I will not see her live her life without knowing. I understand. I'll tell the two of them when the time is right. I am in your debt once again. I really hope that's not that he tells them during this game. Please. No kidding. What I want to know is how all this got to be so messed up. The bracelets. Those bracelets are made of a special alloy. It is said to expand and shrink very slightly in response to body warmth. So they're temperature sensitive or something? Yes. This is how they can shrink to the exact size of their wearer's wrist. This has something to do with the power. What have I told you? The Grammary power reacts to tension in others. When a Grammary senses tension, they too become tense. And this tension translates into m minute contractions of the muscles. So minute they... Oh, minute. So minute, they cannot sense it on their own. Their muscles? Oh, so that's what the bracelets are for. Put a bracelet on, one can sense these contradictions. Because a bracelet is always a perfect fit. Yeah. So when the person they're watching gets sense, the bracelet feels tighter on their wrist. Precisely. But that alone doesn't really count as mind reading. I believe I understand how the process works from there. It's a simple question of eyesight. Eyesight? I guess that sounds simple enough. Have you ever heard of kinetic vision? Something about the ability to see moving objects with full clarity, right? I've heard of it before. They say athletes can see a moving ball like it was stopped if they focus. Oh, but it's not confined to sports alone. Not to the zone. It all relies on the ability to focus. When we focus, we can see many things. The faintest switch of the face and the meaning that lies behind it. Therein lies one of the secrets of magic. One must know the mind of a crowd before one can distract it. So basically what you're saying is, the Grammaries can see really well. <laughs> That's not that really big of a superpower. It's like, yes, they've been passing down a magic skill of being able to see really well. That's like uh, kind of a budget superpower you got. It's not like flying or shooting laser blasts. I mean, it's still pretty cool though. But I'm seeing is more than believing. It is knowing. A power relies on eyesight combined with exceptional focus. Although compared to like with stuff Maya could do, literally summon the dead. It's, it's kind of a, not as crazy. Things are starting to come into focus for me too. Of course, it is difficult to maintain such levels of focus for any length of time. But what if someone could tell you when to focus or something precisely but wait juicy doesn't have any bracelets you're talking about poker yes the timing of when to focus is so elementary she probably does it without thinking and that juicy herself has realized this as all i know of things grammar thank you mr zach if this boy's bracelet is the real thing then he will use it before long Thereby awakening his power. Keep that in mind. Well, shall we play again? Ah, I said so much. Let me say one more thing. I will tell you of that night. That night. The night my mentor, Magnify Grammary, passed from this world to the next. Okay. There were two pistols. Two letters sent. This was Magnify's test. A test. In his last years, Magnify Grammarly worked as us to the bone. No, to the pain. But that night I could not shoot him. So I shot the clown's forehead instead. 
This, it seems, was the correct answer. Take this. I give, an, uh, give my art to you, Zack. What? It is thanks for playing along with my show. You shot well tonight, Zack. Though I would not have minded dying by your hand. How could I shoot you? You're my mentor. Bah! I thought you might say that. But I went home without shooting anything. What would you have done then? And of course I would have given Valent his chance. And if I had shoot you in the forehead instead, then it would be over. If you or Valent were to shoot me in the head, then I, to the darkness, would go. And my heart would me. A fitting end, don't you think? Ah. Yet this ending, too, gives me no cause for regret. I thank you, Zack. And... I'm sorry. I've done so much that was wrong in my day. Hmm. You seemed regretful, I guess. It seems to me that Magnify wanted you to be a successor all along. That's why he gave you... You... That's, a, that's why the time he gave you was earlier than Valance. He kind of thought that Valor would totally shoot him. Which he did. Mayhaps. No, it's probably definitely he shot him. Perhaps. But it is not something we will ever know for sure. No. I wonder, what is Valent up to these days? Waiting for you to die. For seven years pass like this, the performance rights go to him. Ah... And now here I am. And this dream is ended. It's worse than that, actually. Public opinion's a fickle thing, you know. What? You don't mean to tell me they put the blame for our mentor's death on him? The trial ended when you vanished, Mr. Zack. There were even more rumors that Valent had helped you pull it off. But that's madness! Well... Seems that before I can once again disappear from this world, I have one more act to perform. Wait, so. Huh. Interesting. So he doesn't think that Valent did it. So then, did someone else do it? Hmm. Hmm. Well, he doesn't think he did it. I have one more act before him. Isn't it odd that sorting out my life should prove so complicated? Even though I'm dead. One more act. And he got really mad at me during the poker game. I was like, I better cool my head. What a fucking. He brought a fucking girl! Who's the master of scams? And then he's like, fuck! Man, fuck this sucks! Then died. That night, Zach Grammary was killed. He died as Shady Smith, a mysterious traveler with a secret past. But he left one thing behind before he parted this. To whom it may concern, Seven years passed, I, Zach Grammary, murdered my mentor, Magnify Grammary. I apologize for the trouble caused by my sudden departure from court, and hereby confess my crime, Zach Grammary. His confession. He uses us off it, even though he didn't do it. Of course, he'd killed no one. This was his way of tying up loose ends with his old partner, Valent Grammary. He'd rather take it. Damn. Vashon to the slaying of Magnify Grammary. Hmm. And that's it. Still no. We must go. The Sunshine Coliseum! Do we go to him? 
Hey, man. Well, this is a blast from a distant past. Long time no see, Mr. Valent. You sound older. Seven years does one to me. Ha <laughs> ha Frankly, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Actually, I came because there's something I want to ask you. I've spoken to the press. I have nothing more to say. I've spoken to a lot of people myself and come to some conclusions. But then I realized I needed to hear it from you. No, I got this. Could you take a look at this, Mr. Valent? The forgiveness, I beg. Valent has eyes for naught but the preparations for his show. The Coliseum. Hot air balloon. The sign. Oh, and the balloon seller. Ah, right. Sorry. What does the balloon guy have to do with this show? I mean, that, that is a very interesting alpha, right? Wait, hang on. Hang on. A man in the costume is handling out balloons to the kids. It's nice to know kids st still like balloons somehow. They're a favorite of mine. Balloon sellers, that is. I would have them join me on the big stage. They can hand out balloons to the children in the audience. Wouldn't all those balloons get in the way of seeing your show? Bravo. The possibility had not even occurred to me. Phoenix Wright, entertainment consultant. Still got that goofiness in him. It sure is a big sign. Yep, it's a favorite of mine. Impressive, isn't it? Now he's got a slight more deadpan nature. I considered using it for one wall of my house when uh, the show's over. Wow, your house is that big? Actually, as fate would have it, I currently live in a one room apartment. <laughs> oh, my God. But following the wild success of my show, I intend to build a luxurious mansion. I was torn over just how big to make it. Till that sign whispered the answer to me. That's really beautiful. Yep. It totally is. I don't think I've ever seen a hot air balloon so close. It's a favorite of mine. I've often thought of how to use it in one of my shows. Perhaps the climax of Valance quick draw shoot him returns. I stand on stage, I shoot, and the hot air balloon is pierced. It explodes. What do you think? Drilling, yes? A little, I guess. But no one inside the Coliseum would be able to see it. Bravo. It took me four days of planning to realize that. Wow. <sighs> God, no, I'm dealing with a lot of a lot of certain people today, aren't I? A Sunshine Coliseum, was it? I'm not sure it actually qualifies as a Coliseum, but it's a great form. Yes, it is a favorite of mine. I've always been fond of, fond of Sunshine. Speaking of which, have you heard what happened here recently? Oh, yeah, something about something going on during some concert? Exactamundo! I see no reason to hide the fact that I, too, was involved in that case. Yeah, well, that's something. Did you help solve it? Ah! What do you take me for? No, I merely served to deepen the mystery. Thanks. Thanks for that, Valor. That's obstruction. Of justice. He obstructed him, alright. I'm a magician! It's my sworn duty to create mystery whenever possible. Ah, uh, size in his head. I was hoping Phoenix would comment about the the mascot. Anyway, Magnifi Grammary. I've walked a difficult road these past seven years because you couldn't perform Magnifi's repertoire. Do not be deceived. Balance skill is the real deal. I do not require my mentor's hand-me-downs. No. It's my partner who sh slowed me on my way. Zach Grammary. His rather well performed disappearing act seven years ago was the end. Or so I thought. Zach Grammary murdered our mentor and fled to escape punishment for his crime. 
You said something to that effect seven years ago, didn't you? I remember it as if it were, were only yesterday. Yet that was not the w way of it in the end. For while he vanished, the suspicions upon my own person never did. His partner, Zack, vanished to protect him. That's what those steeping magpies of the press said. I had no idea. Yet that very same press comes to me now, feigning interest. They covered the greatest magician show in the history as if it were a vaudevillian vaud destruction. And here I must stand, smiling at them all. What am I, if not a player in some fiendish farce? Well, I suggest it's because you never made it clear what happened. Magnifique's death is still a mystery to this day. Which is why I came here to get an answer from you. Come on, man. I knew I'd be seeing these sooner or later. The audience has no business stepping upon the stage. They must be content to sit and stare at the spotlight. Hmm. That sounds like an awful lot like something I heard seven years ago. Ah, let's do this. I got a lot of evidence. This should be good. And after this, will I be able to go to Kristoff? Who knows? Only two, though. Mind if he's deaf. Ask what you will, you'll get nothing from me. I'm much a part of this as fair as you are now. I have to know what happened. For seven long years, I have endured. Now, finally, the curtain lifts on my new golden age. All the miracles of our troop within my grasp. Sorry to do this, Valent. But right now, I need answers. I think I'll start by dropping a bomb. That should shake things up. Valent, I wouldn't be so sure about those miracles. Not as long as I have this. Ah, yeah, okay. Let me be frank. No one, and I mean no one, can stand in my path. Not even you with your silly, frilly ways. Let me be frank too. That's the first time anyone's called me silly frilly. All I need is a bit of magic. Something to stop balance showing its tracks. Now's no time for subtlety. Okay, well that was the other big reveal. What about this one? Oh my god! I'm losing my health here, buddy. I need you to work with me on this. The document of transfer all of rights? Okay. What might that be? I see it bears the grammary seal. I should have brought this to your attention sooner. But I didn't imagine you'd be planning your comeback quite so fast. What is this? A document showing the true recipient of the performance rights to Magnify's miracles. What? Zack Grammary? He wrote this? What? He passed everything to his daughter? Juicy Enigma, actually. She's officially my daughter these days. Preposterous. Zack's... Zack is gone. Vanished into the void. This is the genuine article. Zack was alive when he wrote this. Both myself and the notary can testify to this. Uh, uh, uh. I didn't say Alica, whatever. He must have gone out of that. Why? Why does fate toy with me so? Why must my life be lived in the draw to the dead? You're not going. You're not the only one with that problem. He shot Magnify. Yes, it was Zack. It was. And then he left, and my career as a magician fell into darkness. Did you think that there might be some way out of it? Say if you could prove Zach Grammary shot Magnify. Was that why you testified? Yes, my way out. It should have been my way out. Well, it might not be too late, Mr. Valent. All you need is a way to prove your case. Who really killed Magnify Grammary? It was the amazing Mr. Hat.
Ne. Ne. Oh no, no, it's not. What? Well, eh. No, none of that has kind of occurred to me. That's not it. It's, it's this one. But could she have done it? He's really adamant that he didn't do it, or at least is in so many ways. That would be something. That would be fucked up. <laughs> anyway, let's go to Zach's confession. I believe I have the answer to your prayers right here. Zach Gremory wrote one more thing before passing on. This. But this is a confession. In which he admits to killing the killing of Magnify Gremory. See? All according to your plan. I am. Magician by trade. Deception is my life's work. Oh, the audience. Give them a fleeting dream. Yet it seems that her abels have turned. Now I am the audience, believing in the deceptions I have wrought upon myself. Zach wrote this right in front of me. After I explained your situation to him. I'll look up. I'll look up. Oh my god! Okay, that will have it die hard. So, what happened that night? Come on, man, tell me. You didn't tell me your entire side of the story. Let me hear it. You do know that this confession is nothing but lies. Yes, it's my opinion that Zach Grammary killed no one. And you must be thinking the truth is a simple matter of elimination. Two received instructions to kill, but one is innocent. No one who remains is guilty. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. So he managed to protect me. His partner. <laughs> Stirring tales is true. Man, this is sad. Did you shoot Magnify Grammary in the forehead? If I had, and I told you, what would you do? Into the police, perchance? Do as you will. There is nothing left for me now. It is true, after all. I have little talent. I needed my mentor Magnify's repertoire. It was as if a little demon grabbed a hold of me. I knew it. So Valent Grammary did kill the great Magnify. Damn. <laughs> so sorry, Mr. Wright. But it was not I who shot my mentor! Oh, come on! I'm having a moment there, buddy. What? what? But, but it wasn't you? Then who was it? Was another disciple was there. Another disciple? Such as I don't know. Knack and talent grammar. <laughs> what? No, now I'm thinking it's her. Now I'm thinking it's it's her. What? It's possible elimination that has to be there's like three disciples here. Oh, for fuck's sakes. I don't have any evidence on that. It's literally just a baseless accusation. That is not quite based. I don't know. Mac or ta and talent grammar, maybe? Your wild fancies couldn't be further from the truth. Only Zack and Valent received those threatening letters. But there was another. One more person could have fired that pistol that night. I don't suppose you figured it out by now. Ah. But I, I am not really. I, I, I don't know who was there. If it wasn't Zach or Valent who shot Magnify, then it had to be the only other person at the scene, which means. The nurse? Wait, wait. You don't mean. Yes. The great Magnify Grammary himself? Ah, fuck. I forgot about suicide being a thing. I'll play that mystery music. Thank you for the, the mystery music, sir. Fuck. Suicide. 
So McDuffie Grammary committed suicide. Find it hard to believe. To be honest, I hadn't even imagined it as a possibility. <laughs> uh, I mean, that makes sense though. He had cancer. He was dying. So it's like, why not? No, 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 no. This was... It's possible. My... My idea with that was because she probably was like, Yo, you covered up my quote-unquote death. Why would you do that, Dad? And then you started to blackmail my husband and my friend. So I'm not kind of happy about that. And then she comes in to shoot him. I think that I guess the... The most complicated questions are bad or simple. Suicide. Huh. When I arrived that night, the old man was still alive. He appeared to be asleep. I... I could not shoot him. But when I turned and made to leave the room, the old man called out to me. So you spoke with Magnific Grammar... Oh, so you spoke to Magnific Grammar, eh? Yes. This is why I knew what he had done. Magnify transferred the rights to his repertoire to my partner, Zach Grammary. Not me. I see. Then I guess I owe you an apology. I always thought you were the one who did it. You owe me no apology. Come on, huh? My crumb was in a way more serious than that of murder. But what? Your crime? Is Valid Grammary confessing something to me? He's confessing something. He's saying he didn't murder him, but... Did you tell him to go kill himself and then to low... I'm sorry. Did you tell him to low tier God himself and then he just did it? What could be more serious than murder? And then you felt bad for that because you made him feel guilty or something? You see, I knew that two letters had been sent. There are no secrets between partners. It is easy to find out. That was when I understood Magnify's plan. You wanted to die by one of your hands. Little did I expect it had nothing to do with the rights to his repertoire. That was when I heard it. A little demon whispering inside my heart. The demon. Let me confess. I had intended to shoot Magnify. I think we're having this entirely serious discussion. Out, what is up, supposedly outside of the Sunshine Dome with all of these kids going with balloons, a magic show billboard out back there. Just like, out here. And I planned on framing my partner for the crime. What? What? That night I prepared something before going to Magnify's hospital room, which was IV fluid, of course. I've seen it on an earlier visit. If Zack did not shoot, I would do the deed. Then, I would use the IV liquid to place the murder on his hands. That was my plan. But you didn't shoot him. I could not. The demon in my heart fled when the moment came. But then Magnify called me back. I am sorry, Valent. I'm giving my magic to Zack, not you. You still lack the draw he has. Please, help him, if you can. I left the room. And then I stopped. The shock of what I had just been told consumed me. That was when I heard that fateful gunshot. Magnify Grammary killing himself. I mean, low tier godding himself. You two, please don't take down this video. Then the demon awoke on you within me. Zack killed him. He was the one. Frame him, and the magic will be yours. Ah, oh, so you framed it to look like Zack, though. I altered the scene of his suicide. I took the pistol from his hand, wiped off the prints. Ah, that's why all the prints are gone. 
And I used a syringe to add uh, the IV fluid I bought. So in the end, things happened pretty much as planned. Magnify died and you framed Zack for his murder. As planned indeed. Of course, the outcome was somewhat different than I had anticipated. Well, what do you think? Do you believe my story? Can it be believed? Truly? That was seven years ago. I don't know what to believe, but... Yes. I'm glad I heard it from you, Mr. Valent. Thank you. It is I who should be thanking you, Mr. Wright. Only when I had lost everything could I make my decision. Are you going to turn yourself in? My partner may have vanished, but not so my guilt. And as my guilt stays, all else begins to leave me. My friends, my performance, rights, my magic. I've had enough of vanishing acts. I understand. I thought my life was ruled by a dead man. But if I find I was wrong, Zach Grammary was alive. Well, not anymore. Uh, we should probably tell them about that. Yo, Phoenix, you should probably tell Trucy about that at some point. Yes, just saying. And now it occurs to me, what if he was not the only one who survived? What do you mean? You see, now that I think about it, I realize that I... No. We never saw proof of her demise. We never saw her body. Her? The mind races and the mouth flaps on. My apologies. Forget this, madam. I can only hope that the day will come when I meet my partner. Me and I again meet my partner, Zach Grammary. And I shall apologize for my terrible mistake. I'm glad we had the chance to talk. Thank you. Oh, that was a sweet scene. Zach Grammary, Shady Smith, whichever name you prefer, he is no longer with us. The truth revealed in that trial was only a sliver. And the impenetrable darkness that remained has taken another life. I knew what I had have to do to push back the darkness for good. It would involve paying that man a visit. Oh man, here we go. Them locks. Them big old locks. Sorry, sir. Prisoner Christoph Gavin is currently occupied. I see. Do you know when he'll be finished? Ah, uh, um, well. Could you go find out? Uh-huh. Certainly, sir. Please wait here a moment. My apologies to the guard. But there's something I need to see. That letter. It's so important. There it is. The yellow envelope. And the sender is... Drew Misham, I was right. Oh, so this is after the trial. What the fuck? When I arrived at the studio, Mr. Misham was at his desk. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. It was a yellow envelope. I heard it was left at the crime scene. This is the last letter that Drew Misham wrote. And there's something I need to do. Last thing I need to do, in fact. Here goes. Let's see if this antiquarian spray finds anything. There we go. Same minute. I thought I was examining it by the automatically, so I just, just did not press anything. So this was Drew Misham's messenger of death. It was a stamp, all right. No mistaking it. And his letter was sent to Christoph Gavin. The interview request came, like you said it would. 
They're looking into the case. I swear on my life, I won't tell them about you. So please release the spell you've put on my daughter. I'll write a later. I'll write later with a report. Gotcha. Letter from Misham. Add it to the court record. Finally. Decisive evidence. What's this? A burglar in jail. Gavin! I didn't know you moonlighted and lost any right. Gavin, there's something I have to ask you. Can I steal your stuff? The answer is no. My apologies, but there's not much I care to discuss. Her Misham hasn't received her verdict yet. You follow me, Gavin? There are no known survivors of antiquarian poisoning. But it never hurts to hope. Okay. I'll be leaving now then. Right, wait. Yeah, Gavin? Would you mind leaving that letter? What letter? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I got kind of, um... I don't know what you're talking about, man. I got, I got no letters. I don't know what you mean. It's private. Oh. Sorry. Forgot I had it. Many thanks. See ya, buddy. <laughs> oh, I can't unlock the locks. He's unlockable. Oh, this is camp! recording it we've now seen all the clues in this case clues I got it over seven long years now it is time every story has an ending we've come to the final chapter the final trial find the truth you're the only ones who can to be continued Now comes the big question. Do I continue or do I just end off for tomorrow? This is the last trial, huh? What have we been going for? Well, we got stuck for like an hour. I feel like we got stuck for an hour. If I start this trial, I'd have to go to the end. Which is at least probably two hours, right? Since I read everything, it'll probably be two hours plus. <gasps> mm, I'm waffling a bit. Hang on. Let me just... Do, do, do. Look for something. Yeah, it would be for like two hours. I will call it. I will call it. We will finish it tomorrow. I don't mind streaming tomorrow. I don't got uh, much to do. It will be a shorter stream because uh, I'm pretty sure it will be only for two hours. Because if I started now, I'm going to stay up to like 11. Uh, so that's fine. But no, I uh, thank you uh, people for coming by. 
So that's why I did put the title finale, maybe. But uh, tomorrow is a finale for sure. That was good though. We collected all the evidence. <laughs> that was a cool ass evidence collecting though. What a, what a very inventive uh, way to do that. And now, um, yeah, it's, this is it. I'm excited. We had a lot of revelations. And uh, I'm excited to see what they all lead. Right now, what I can guess from all these clues is that Kristoff was indeed behind a lot of that. Uh, I don't know how uh, Lamoir, aka Talasa, lost her memories. Or why? Was it trauma to the gunshots? I'm not sure. But it was very important. Somehow, I thought... I thought that episode 3 and 2 were kind of unconnected. 3 mostly. Turning out that... It turns out that episode 3 is so connected to the entire story. Well, this is actually the most unconnected one. Which is very funny. Um, but yeah... Uh, I'd say I'm excited. I I'm definitely excited for this. This, this game's been great. This final trial has been fucking. It's been it's been going off. Uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, and yeah, that is that is it. Uh, thank you, people, for showing up. I'm sorry I didn't finish the game. Had I figured things out a little bit better, I would have been able to probably do it today. But um, that's fine. We have tomorrow. I know, um, Seven Rebirth comes out tomorrow. People will be playing that a lot. Uh, I don't have my copy yet. I don't even know if it's shipped yet, which is making me worried if I will be able to play it. I'm, mm, I hope it does. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's everything. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. 